All right, guys, so as promised this week, I'm going to show you how to take out the factory wheel studs, whether it's broken or not, how to take it out of the axle and drive in some extended length studs for you racers. Now, if you remember back a couple weeks ago, I had said that I need to put some longer studs in the rear end of Wide Fox. The reason was I'm going to add a pan hard bar and then I want to be able to adjust the wheels outboard as needed to be able to sit flush with the fenders. In order to do that, really, if it's 3 eighths or bigger on a spacer, I would need longer studs. So rather than uh, wait for later on, I'll just get it done now and put it in. So what I'm putting in today are some, uh, they are half inch by 20 or half inch um, 20 threads per pitch, three inch longs, ARP studs. So we're driving these ones out, putting those ones in. This is how we're going to do it. So if you're watching this, you hopefully have a pretty good idea how to get the axles out of the rear housing. Especially on a Ford 8.8, a lot of times they're a C-clip. And if you don't remember how to do it, I will put a link up up there of how to rebuild one and take it all apart and put it back together, which will help out. Now, once you have the axles out, definitely double check to make sure they're in good shape. Nothing's too worn, like you need to replace them. And if they're in good shape, then we're going to go ahead and drive out these axle studs. And I'll show you how to do that right now. All right, so the way I'm driving out these axle studs out of the OEM axles is going to be controversial, and I know this. Most people are going to tell you to put it in a hydraulic press and press them out. If you have one with some anchor plates and all that stuff, great job. If you've got it, do it that way. Much easier and safer. If you don't, and you don't want to invest the money like I didn't, you bring out the big hammer. Now, the easiest way to do this is I stood over it and basically swung, and you've got to hit these things directly on the end and drive them linearly out out the back. Now, if your aim is bad or you're not confident in doing it, take it down to a machine shop or someplace that has a press, just press them out. They can probably put the studs in for you or put them in, put them out, however you want to do it. If you don't feel confident using the hammer, don't. If you're like me and you've got a decent enough aim where you didn't hit yourself and lose a finger, just kidding, I have all four fingers. You can drive these out pretty reasonably and there's nothing, I guess, nothing preventing other than just some time. Now I will say on the back, remember that this area, this shiny area is where your seal is on the end of the axle. So you've got to take care of this whole process, not to gouge this up that will allow oil out of your housing and into your brakes and that. So if you want to put tape over this, you can, not a requirement. Just remember, you've got to keep it safe and clean to make sure it doesn't get gouged up. Now, once you have all of your axle studs out of the housing, what you'll have left is an axle with some holes. You're going to have to drill them out to put in the uh, ARP studs or even the Moroso or any other brand. You're probably going to have to drill them out with a 39-64 drill bit. Now, they're a little hard to find. I checked everywhere local, couldn't find one, just ordered one offline for, I think, $12 to $15, somewhere in there. I'll put it, basically put a description in my uh, Amazon cart for you guys can go look at it, see if you need one, um, and then check whatever you need. But I mean, needed to make a jig. We tried this, uh, my wife and I tried it, where I drilled it and she held the axle, and that worked terribly, honestly. So I came up with a jig, or really, honestly, my wife came up with this jig, which worked brilliantly. And that was to use a big piece of wood. So... What we've got is two cylinder blocks, cylinder blocks, cinder blocks that I put in basically a, a piece of two by six that would go across, and I drilled a three inch hole in it. Now I've also drilled in three other holes here, which matches up to the lug pattern. And what this does when you set it down, the center bore of the axle here goes in the three inch hole. And then you're going to basically bolt down two of the five holes to the board. And by doing that, you can just put basically a, a big stud. Put two of those to there, bolt it down, and then you've got kind of this piece that you can stand on and drill through. Now the shank on the drill bit itself is pretty large, so I went and got one of these big monster torquey 
electric drillers and it sucks it honestly sucks but if you just take your time you can drill literally straight down through these and drill them out for a 3960 force hole and get those ready once you have all five holes drilled out and then you could just take a grinder and basically clean off the surface in case there's any uh, shavings or anything else or a little tips or anything grind off front to back so that you have a clean surface to mount the wheel to and the brake to and on the back side it'll pull the stud tight to the surface without making it angled and hard to put the wheel on all right so now before you start this whole process one thing i would recommend is taking all of your lug studs and putting them in the freezer for about 24 hours prior to doing this the reason is you get these things nice and cold they're going to shrink a little bit and that will help them go in the axles a little bit easier once you have that done and you think you got everything ready to go how you're going to assemble this is you're going to have the frozen lug stud you don't have to do this but you can you can take just a simple torch and you can heat it heat the axle up just a little bit you want it warm and that's just to help it expand Now the heating itself is not a requirement, but I found helps a little bit. So you put your axle through, or your stud through really, and you got a big stack of washers, just like this. You're gonna slip over. Now these are half inch washers, and they, so they should just slide just over the threads, but not be too large. And then you're gonna get them down to where they're pretty close. Once you have that done, Get a little bit of grease, just, just a dab, just all you need. And this is to help with a little bit of the friction between the uh, threads. And then get yourself either a lug nut or an, an open-ended, uh, basically a nut, basically, which is how you're going to drive it. Just know that any lug you put on here is probably going to strip the threads out of it, so do not use your favorites. Use an old set or just go get an, uh, maybe a handful of open-ended nuts from the hardware store that will do this so that if you do tear them up it's okay it's, a, it's an expendable so once you've got it all together hand thread and start it get your impact and make sure you're using a black the black impact socket on this you don't want to use the thin wall they will crack and become shrapnel so use the thick wall impact ones so once you have it all in there I'm gonna drive half the stud down in there, and then I'm gonna back it off, throw in a couple more washers, and then finish it up. So, here we go. Now, once you have all five done, you're good to go. Now, there's an easy way you can check to make sure they're square and they're going to fit your wheel, and that is to basically fit them to a wheel. So, if you see behind, I have one of my tires there, and it's upside down so that I can fit the axle to the back. And what I've done there is just uh, take it, set this in there after every stud, make sure the hub centric center of the axle goes in, the studs in, and then at the end, uh, when I put the axle back in the housing, you can also take your wheel, set it up on there, make sure it sits on the center hub, and then look to make sure all of your um, studs coming through the wheels are approximately centered. That way they're not kinked. You also should be able to tell if you look on the back of the axles 
that there should be no gap all the way around them, meaning they're sitting flat against the surface, surface to surface, and that they're gonna be in good shape. Once you have all five done, just clean off the threads of any grease or anything else. Say goodbye to most of your washers because you probably tore them up. Look at that, look at that thing. Poor thing. And then, again, your lugs, you're probably gonna rip most of the threads out of those. They're expendable, just get some cheap ones. All right guys, so that's it. It's not very complicated to really do. Just take your time with it. Make sure you're just being safe. Remember, remember always use an impact socket with an impact gun. Don't, don't use it thin wall stuff. I've shown you bad ideas and I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop doing that. So be safe, take it easy on it. And if you have any questions on how to do it, if I didn't explain enough, you can always, always contact me, you know, message, comment, whatever else, you know, I'm here for you. So that's it for this time on Basin Motorsports. Remember, axle studs, they're not so bad. Time to get this thing back on some meats. We'll see you next time.